a Star Wars game where I can't play as Watto? This game is worse than the Rwandan genocide. Star Wars and Lego go together hand in hand, as they pretty much appeal to the same kind of people. Small children, and underdeveloped man children. Oh yeah! Oh yeah, I fucking love Star Wars! So it should be no surprise that some executive smartass decided to combine the two, and thus Lego Star Wars was released for every console and handheld that mattered in 2005. LEGO Star Wars established the format that every other LEGO brand game would follow. The vast majority of levels within each chapter are presented as a 3D action platformer, with a mix of combat, platforming and puzzle elements. These challenges are completed by using the abilities of the different available playable characters. Jedi characters can use force powers to reconstruct certain platforms and switches. Robot characters can be used to open character-specific doors. And ranged characters can use grappling hooks like they did in that one part of Phantom Menace. Even Jar Jar actually has a purpose, acting as a long jumper for some fucking reason. These abilities work in such a way, that nothing is lost when either playing alone, or in co-op as the ability to switch characters on the fly is simple and intuitive. In addition to this, each chapter has an on-rails vehicle level which helps break up the gameplay nicely, though the controls in these sections can be a little janky at times. The pod racing section was a highlight, but it definitely loses points by not including the announcers. <laughs> Overall these varying mechanics all blend together well creating a simple yet engaging experience. Unlike actual Star Wars LEGO, seriously, try and build a 700 pound Millennium Falcon and tell me it's simple yet engaging. That shit's like Ikea for masochists. In terms of story, the game is separated into four chapters, covering the three prequel movies as well as an additional level set in a movie that was actually good. <laughs> The movie plot is presented through in-game cutscenes, which improve on the prequel story by having no dialogue. This is where a lot of this game's charm comes from, as they take the prequel story in a fun, slapstick direction, rather than the direction that made George Lucas reconsider every decision he ever made. I may have gone too far in a few places. Graphically the game holds up, despite being nearly 15 years old, and does a good job of recreating the varied locations from the films. This is mostly due to the more simplistic art style that comes with the LEGO franchise, especially when compared with other Star Wars tie-in games from the time, which have aged like catsick. Being a Star Wars game, the soundtrack is taken from the original score by John Williams. I think it goes without saying that his score is brilliant, given that this is the man who wrote Duel of the Fates for the movie equivalent of Pearl Harbor. LEGO Star Wars is pretty good. While I'm pretty sure it's aimed at children due to its low difficulty, overall it's a fun game. It's easy to see why this format has persisted across all the later LEGO tie-in games. Indiana Jones, Harry Potter, Communist China, all their LEGO games can be traced back to this. But would I recommend it? Fuck no, play the complete saga so you can play as a mouse droid. <laughs> 